This is how you can draw a cool flat design logo like this inside Adobe Illustrator. My name is Kent, I'm a graphic designer and this is Dia Graphics. So here we are in Illustrator and the first thing we want to do is turn on the grid and the snap to grid feature. So go to view, then go to show grid, then go to view again and snap to grid. Then we want to go to our transform panel. If the transform panel isn't open, you can go to window and find the transform panel right here. Then go to this drop down menu right here and uncheck align new objects to pixel grid. This will make our shapes more precise. So now zoom in to the grid. Then go to the ellipse tool. And while holding down the shift key, draw a complete circle like this. Then choose a color for the circle. You can always change this later and select the stroke and turn off the stroke. Then go to the selection tool and while holding down the alt key to duplicate, duplicate the circle while holding down the shift key to make sure you drag it down in a straight line and drag it down until it snaps to the bottom of the first circle. Then once again, hold down the alt key to duplicate this circle and drag it to the right while holding down the shift key until it snaps to the right side of this circle. Then with the arrow keys on your keyboard, notch this circle up until it fits in the middle of the two other circles. So this center dot should align to this part right here. Then select all the circles, go to the shape builder tool and click on this part right here. Then go to the selection tool, unselect the circles and select the part you just made. Now you can delete the rest of the shapes. So now we have the shape we are going to use for our logo. This means that we don't need the grid anymore. So go to view, go to hide grid, then go to view again and uncheck snap to grid. You can move the shape into the middle of the screen. So now while having this shape selected, hold down the shift key and rotate this shape by 90 degrees. Then zoom into the shape a little bit. Now select the ellipse tool and while holding down the alt key and the shift key, find this anchor point right here and draw a circle from here until it snaps to the green guideline right here. Then go to the selection tool and select both shapes. And as you can see by now, these two corners of the shape are sticking out of the circle. And we only drew this new circle to use it to cut off these spare parts right here. These are going to be the shoulders on the businessman and by cutting off the spare part, the shoulders of the businessman are going to align exactly to a circle when we rotate them later. So now while having both shapes selected, go to the shape builder tool and click on this shape right here. Then as before, go to the selection tool, unselect the selection and grab the shape you just made. Then simply delete the rest. Once again, move the shape back to the middle. And to make sure we did this right and have a nice round curve right here, we zoom into this part right here. And as you can see, that looks fine. So zoom back out. Now we are going to create the head for our first businessman. So go to the ellipse tool. And once again, while holding down the alt key and the shift key, drag a circle from this anchor point right here and drag it to the side until it hits this green guideline right here. Then go to the top of the screen and make sure this link is on. Then go to the width value and type in 50% and click enter. Now go to the selection tool and while holding down the shift key to drag in a straight line, drag the head to the top of the torso. And with the arrow keys, notch the head down until you think the neck looks fine. For me, it looks fine like this. Then select both shapes, go to the rotate tool and while holding down the ALT key to get these three dots next to the cursor, click on this anchor point right here. Then type in 90 degrees and click copy. And to duplicate this step, simply click Ctrl D. So now we have the four businessmen. Then go to the selection tool and unselect the selection and then select the four torsos. Then go to edit, go to copy, then go to edit again and paste in front. This means that we now have an exact copy of the torsos on top of the other ones. Give this copy another color so you can see what you're doing. Then go to the top of the screen and make sure this link is on. Go to the width value and this time type in 35%. Click enter. So now we need these light blue shapes to cut out a hole in the dark blue shapes. And also we need to clean up the outlines of the logo. So just to demonstrate, if we go to the outline mode, we can see that the outlines are overlapping each other and we don't want a logo to have a messy outline like this. That will create some problems if we ever want to use a plotter to cut out stickers in the shape of our logo or something like that. So go back to preview mode and let's clean this up. So first of all, we need to unite these shapes. So while having these light blue shapes selected, go to the pathfinder panel, 
And if the Pathfinder panel isn't open, you can go to Window and go to Pathfinder right here. With this panel open, go to this button right here that says Unite. Now all the light blue shapes are merged into one shape. Let's do the same thing for all the dark blue shapes. So select all the dark blue shapes. Then go to the Pathfinder menu and click Unite. And the light blue shape didn't disappear, it just went behind this dark blue shape. So right click the dark blue shape, go to the Arrange and send to back. Now the light blue shape is back. So now the final thing to do with the icon is to select both shapes and click minus front. This made the light blue shapes cut out a hole into the dark blue shapes. We can illustrate this by putting a shape behind this shape. As you can see, it's a hole now. So delete this shape again. Now go to the selection tool, select the icon, and while holding down the shift key, rotate the icon 45 degrees. So now we have our logo icon, and we can now focus on the typing. So zoom out a little bit, go to the text tool, and create a text box. Then select a font you like. I will select Heading Pro Wide Trial. This is simply a free font that I downloaded from 1001fonts.com. So now type in the company name, in my case it's Business Meet, and let's make it bigger. And also let's make it an extra bold font. The reason why I use this specific font is because it has a corporate expression. The clean lines in this font makes the logo look more trustworthy. So now select the B and make the B bigger. And then select the M and make this bigger too. Then expand the text box. Then give the text a color. In this case, business is dark blue and meat is light blue. And because this is a free font, the kerning is off. So we need to fix this. And the kerning is the gaps between all the letters. We want the gaps to look uniform between all the letters. And as you can see, for instance, there's a very big gap right here. So to make this look more professional, we are going to kern all the letters. So go to Window, go to Type, and select Character. This will make it easier to kern. Then simply select the gaps you want to kern. I'll fast forward while doing this. Now the company name is current, and as you can see it's a very small difference, but it will make the logo look more professional. And just for the demonstration, I sometimes see logos where the kerning is way off, like maybe a hundred. And as you can see it's a very subtle thing, but if the kerning gets too bad, you might read the words as business SS meat instead of business meat. So let's correct this. And we are not completely done with the company name right now, but let's make the tagline. So simply just copy this text right here and type in the tagline. For me, I'll just type in logo design and make this much smaller. And the kerning here doesn't look too bad, but I'll correct a few mistakes. Then I'll give this tagline a color and move it to the middle. Then go to the selection tool and then drag it down a little bit. So as we can see right now, nothing is aligned and also we don't want the text to be an actual text. This can create issues when people are opening up the logo without having the font. So what we want to do when we are finished adjusting the text is to select all the text, right click the text and click create outlines. Now the text is a shape instead of a font. This means that even if people don't have the font, they can still open up the project. And also we can see if we go to view, and choose the outline mode. We can see that all the outlines are now clean. So click on the preview mode again, then close down this character window, select the shape and the text, and go to the top of the window and click horizontal align center. And I would like the icon to be bigger, so let's adjust this. So as you can see, if I click right now, the bounding box is weird because we rotated the icon. So while having the icon selected, go to object, go to transform, and go to reset bounding box. This looks more correctly. So now we can adjust the icon size. I think something like this looks fine. Then adjust the position. And you can zoom out to get a better feel. And this seems to look perfect. I hope you're having a fantastic day. If you want to watch more graphic design tutorials, you can check out one of my videos on the end card right now. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.